Okay. Well, hello, everybody. I pray you all had a great week. We got an interesting lesson this morning, and we're moving into a very, very interesting time period in the ministry of Jesus Christ, right? Do you remember last week? What did Jesus do last week? <laughs> he raised Lazarus from the dead, right? Well, that got a lot of people's attention because, you know, Lazarus had been dead four days. There's no way to deny the miracle. And <clears throat> lots of people became believers, right? And, of course, the, the Pharisees were just hardened their hearts that they, it was so important to them that they get rid of this guy because everybody's believing in Jesus, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? And we know last week, verse 55, the Passover is now at hand. So it's coming up, right? And the Pharisees are planning to kill Jesus. Right? And Lazarus, we find out, because he's the evidence of the miracle, right? And we're going to move into now in chapter 12 of John and talk about Mary anointing Jesus, right? Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, as always, thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence with us. May your Holy Spirit guide us in the study of your word. And may you speak to the people. May your spirit speak to everyone here in your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay, well, now we're going to be in John chapter 12. And as I mentioned, verse 55 of 11 says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. And everybody was seeking Jesus. Is Jesus coming? The Jews want to kill him. You know, the Phanhedrin, they want to kill him. Is he going to come? You know, because Passover was the biggest feast, and everybody, all able-bodied uh, Jewish men would go to Jerusalem you know, for the Passover, right? And probably next week, a week after, we're going to be talking about the Passover and what it's about and how the death angel passed over in Egypt, right? And the firstborn male of every family and every animal died if they weren't covered by the blood, right? Right? And on the first day of the week, they would bring this lamb into the house for four days. And, of course, four days, the lamb in the house is, it's a pet now, right? But then on the fourth day, they had to kill the lamb and, and have the Passover meal, right? Well, that is all symbols of what's going to happen on this coming week that we'll be studying. Now, the week starts on, we call Sunday, to us Sunday is the weekend, but to most of the world, even today, Sunday is the first day of the week, right? So if we start in John chapter 1, because we're about to start the Passover week, it says, Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Remember, he had gone to the city called Ephraim with his disciples after he raised Lazarus from the dead. So a little bit later, wasn't very long, he now comes back to Bethany, which is a couple of miles from Jerusalem, right? And it says, they made for him a supper there, and Martha was serving Typical for Martha, right? But Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table, right? Now, in those days, the table was very low. You didn't sit up on chairs. You know, the table was very low, and you basically lie down with your head up at the table and your feet out the back, right? So Lazarus was one of them reclining at the table. Mary... Now, Mary and Martha were sisters of Lazarus, right? Mary, therefore, took a pound 
a very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Now this, as she says here, very costly, okay? And we know from the other gospels what we're talking about here. You know, we get more detail when we put it all together. This alabaster bottle with this nard oil in it, the bottle would have come from Egypt. The nard oil came from what they called spike nard plants, which are in the mountains of northern India. So when they talk about this being very expensive, we know that it was somewhere in the area of 300 dinars or 300 days wages, right? If you take out for the Sabbath days, you know, you're basically talking about a year's wages. So what's the average year's wage today? I don't know. Let's just say it's $50,000. I don't know. Everybody's different, right? But something like that. So if somebody had a bottle of perfume worth $50,000, and the way you open it is you break off the neck and then pour it out, right? And when they say a pound, this would have been a Roman pound, which would be close to a pint. So it's not a little bit amount, but it's also not a, it's not a gallon or anything like that, right? It's about a pint in this Roman pound of this very expensive. So we know that Lazarus, Mary, and Martha were not poor, right? And they were um, uh, probably financial supporters of Jesus' earthly ministry, right? And they, of course, had time with Jesus to the point that they knew who he was, right? So there he is now putting <clears throat> this dinner together to honor him. <laughs> and Lazarus, you know, the guy that was dead, is there at the dinner, right? And so Mary comes in, Martha's serving, which she's done before, and Jesus had to kind of correct her because Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus another time, you know, and learning from Jesus and chosen the best thing. Martha was doing a good thing. Mary was doing the best thing, right? So now she comes in with this. And this may have been her dowry. This might have been more costly to Mary than just the expense. It may have been, you know, her dowry for getting married. We don't know, you know what it was all about. Or may it was part of it, you know. We don't have any of those details. We can only surmise because it certainly appears that Mary and Martha are not married. Right? And we don't know exactly their age, etc. But... Lazarus was their their brother and probably their primary income provider, right? So she breaks this open and anoints the feet of Jesus. We know from the other gospels she also anointed his head, right? She may have poured it over his whole body. We don't know, <laughs> right? We know from other gospels she at least did his head, and here we know she at least did his feet. Now, who would wash the feet of somebody in the house. Only the lowest servant. That's who washed feet. And we know that a little bit later, just a few days later here, Jesus is going to wash the feet of his disciples. Well, Mary is anointing Jesus. And here we have ex explicit example of her anointing his feet and then wiping his feet with her hair. Now, again, in Jewish custom, she would never let her hair down in any sort of public uh, environment. But she let her hair down and used it to wipe the feet of Jesus. This is the kind of affection, the love that she had for Jesus, that she would take probably the most valuable thing she had 
and break it open and anoint Jesus with it. Now, it says in verse 4, But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who was intending to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to poor people? Okay? Now, we also know that he wasn't the only disciple he was like the ringleader of this. What? This expensive perfume? And we've just poured it out? We could have given it to the poor. We could have sold it and given it to the poor. Now, he wasn't concerned about the poor, was he? Verse 6. Now, he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to fill for what was put into it. Now again, in John, we're hearing specifically about Judas, but some of the other disciples voiced their opinion also that, oh, maybe we should have given this to the poor, right? Judas must have had some kind of money skill somewhere along the way for him to be the treasurer of the group. But Jesus, being the Lord God, he knew all about what was going on with Judas, what was in his heart, you know, what he had been doing, and what he, quote, planned to do. He knew it all along. He knew it from the beginning. He knew it before he created the earth. <laughs> right? He is, after all, the Lord God. Judas opens his big mouth here. Usually we have Peter opening the big mouth. <laughs> in this case, it was Judas jumping in and saying, wait, wait a minute. Why wasn't this sold and given to the poor, right? <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus therefore said, let her alone. Let her alone in order that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor, you, plural, all y'all, always have with you, but you do not always have me. Jesus in his physical form, the God-man Jesus is going to suffer and die and then go back to heaven, right? And she is preparing Jesus for that event by anointing him with this very expensive oil, okay? But who would be more worthy? Who else but the Lord God, right, would be more worthy? Even the most expensive oil in the world is not enough for Jesus. Not even close. But this is all she had. It's the best that she had. Are we supposed to give our best to Jesus? Like the first day of the week, right? We set aside for Jesus. In the Old Testament, we were asked to do a tithing of a tenth. Well, we're not under the law, we're under grace. But can we do less under grace than we would do under the law, right? 10% is a minimum plus offerings. If we put Jesus first and give him our best, and Mary was saying, this is, this is the best I've got, and I'm giving it to my Lord and Savior, who not only is saving me for all eternity, he even raised my brother from the dead, <laughs> you know, took care of me here on earth, plus is taking care of my eternity. I shall be with the Lord, with Jesus, forever, right? She knew it, and she made the sacrifice. Judas, in his heart, three years this guy is with Jesus. He had seen so many miracles, including the raising of Nazareth from the dead. But yet, he wasn't willing to surrender. 
He still had a me first attitude, not Christ first. Sometimes I catch myself doing that. I go listen to the Gaither sing, and that really puts me back in, in place, right? Helps me a lot. Jesus said, let her alone. Kind of important that we take that step. First off, we have to accept Jesus as who he is and our personal Lord and Savior. Then the decisions we make that, that point forward, the Holy Spirit will help us do that. Right? The Spirit of God comes to live within us. Mary had that. Mary had that Jesus first attitude. Not Mary first. Lazarus, again, still. It's all about Lazarus and what he could have, what he could get. And he ends up betraying Jesus for the price of a normal slave. 30 pieces of silver. A normal slave. <laughs> he betrays the Lord God for that little bit. I don't know whatever happened in his heart after that when he hung himself, etc. I don't know where he ended up. I think he's not in the good place. Because he always put himself first. We have to make that decision, like Mary. Sacrifice for the Lord God, for Jesus Christ, who saves us from our sin. Verse 9 says, The great multitude, therefore, of the Jews learned that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, right? Jesus, who raised Lazarus from the dead, but they might also see Lazarus. How many people have seen a guy that was dead for four days, and now he's back to life, right? We got to see this guy. This is amazing. What well, is amazing, right? Four days? Four days in the grave, and here he is. Walking around now and laying at the table having dinner, right? So the sight see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priest took counsel that they might put Lazarus to dead, to death also. <laughs> Remember last week we were talking about he said. Caiaphas says, it's better that one man should die than the whole nation should perish. Well, of course, Jesus came to die for not only for Israel, but for the whole world, right? <clears throat> but he's trying to say, let's put this one man to death for our benefit. Now, his sin is, ex is compounded because he can't just put Jesus to death. Now he has to put Lazarus to death also. And then later, he wants to put all believers to death. Imprison them. Satan gets his grip on you. The lows you can drop to are amazing. The chief priests took counsel that they might put Lazarus to death also because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and they were believing in Jesus. Can't have people believing in the Lord God that we're supposed to be worshiping, but we don't because we're deceived by Satan. We have to analyze ourselves. How often is Satan deceiving us? Make sure. Call on the Holy Spirit of God to guide you through all the events. Don't be tricked into different things, especially when it gets so bad as to people that actually worship Satan, right? And do unbelievable, terrible things. Unbelievable. I mean, just mind-bogglingly bad. And that's where these people end up. But a lot of the Jewish people, right, 
Many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. They see these marvelous miracles. This man has to be from God. <laughs> Who else could do this? Obviously nobody. Only Jesus. Short lesson today. Next week we move into the triumphal entry. The first day of the week. When Jesus enters Jerusalem through the eastern gate, declaring himself the Messiah. Father in heaven, thank you as always for your presence with us, for your love, for your grace, for your forgiveness of our sins. May your spirit guide us to put you first and make the sacrifices we should make, recognizing you as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may all those hearing your word that don't know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be their day. Your spirit could reach them, convict them of their sin, inspire them to ask for Jesus and his forgiveness. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, that's our rather brief lesson this morning because we only had 11 verses to cover, <laughs> unlike the 57 we had last week. <laughs> All right? Well, God bless you all. Have a great week.